the gospel because the gospel was a stage play. This is why so many events in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are compressed within a three-hour period. It was designed to be watched in an amphitheater. It's not true history, and it never was. And for those of you who are interested in that, you need to watch my videos in my playlist, The Dark Scriptures. I explain exactly how all this came to be. How the story of Jesus was taken from Apollonius of Tyana, and how the entire thing was basically created by the church and turned into real history, according to the church, over 300 years after the events they depict. But all the world is a stage. And if you observe everything around you objectively, that objectiveness creates an informed field. That informed field radiates the information that you are invincible, untouchable, immortal, and not concerned with what goes on around you. This informed field is empowered by your behavior, which is, remember, faith without works is dead. Behavior is works. The simulacrum, which can't read your mind, but it can read your cortisol and endorphin levels, and it can interpret all your behavior, automatically assumes as true whatever your purporting truth to be. Act as if you are, and you will be. The simulacrum knits the necessary reality tunnel to make sure that in the particular, you are absolutely right. But in the collective, all hell may be going on around you. We are, we are way more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. We see evidence of it in our personal lives all the time, and we, and we instantly, because, because the nature of reality is negative default programming, we instantly dismiss it. And we think, yeah, you know what? Yeah, it happened. Yeah, I did that. I did that. But you know what? Nobody saw it. Yeah. Four or five hours later, you have already minimized the importance of what you experienced. Because the simulacrum's good at that. It's going to bring you back down. It needs to. The more and more that you divorce yourself from the protocols of the simulacrum, the more it will suffer from the law of diminishing returns. In the law of diminishing returns, the simulacrum will quit trying to because it's expending too much energy. Remember, it also has to abide by another law, the law of conservation of energy. It's not going to expend energy on, on something that's going to waste its time. Remember, the simulacrum knows our true identities. It knows we are immortals. It can't read our thoughts. And it's always suspicious it's being deceived. So we have to be careful. But in that care, we have to also be absolutely fearless. Because fear is a power. Fear is... But fear, excuse me, being fearless, that confidence, the simulacrum doesn't know what to do with that. So, any time an operating system is confronted with a contagion, what does it do? It's, go, it's going to confine it. What, what's the best way that an operating system like the simulacrum can do to confine an immortal that is not controlled? Distract it. Put that carrot out there. Give it a distraction. It doesn't matter what that distraction is. If that immortal mind will follow that distraction, then the simulacrum is back in control. That distraction can be anything. It can be a beautiful woman walking through Walmart. You totally forgot why you were trying to buy ketchup. You know, it's happened to me. So, look. You see that number? Whatever that number is. You need to start ignoring it because you're going to be really surprised what you come into contact with as soon as you, you start ignoring the sinks because the simulacrum is going to react. It's going to realize, holy shit, this person is no longer paying attention to these sinks, this deja vu, this Mandela effect, this synchronicity, all these little distractions that it's trying to send you out because you're on the verge of something great and it knows it. And it will do everything to distract you from that. So quit paying attention to them. Quit, quit giving power to something that is a phantom. Those, those little numbers you keep seeing that are popping up. If you, give, if you give them significance, 
then the simulacrum will comport with that and it will start providing you the significance you seek. And in that behavior, you're in a feedback loop. Every day you wake up, you're looking on YouTube for basically confirmation bias. Don't fall into that trap, my brothers and sisters. Those numbers don't mean anything.